GP. When Ramesh wakes up, he feels sick. He has a bad headache and he has a high fever. This means that he feels very hot. He has not seen a doctor since he came to Australia. He asks his friend Deepak. Deepak has been living in Australia for two years. Deepak, I don't feel very well. Oh, Ramesh, you should make an appointment to see a GP. And when you make an appointment, you should ask for an interpreter. But I want to see a qualified doctor at the hospital. Ramesh, all doctors in Australia are qualified, not just the doctors in hospitals. People go to see the GP first. If they are very, very sick, the doctor will send them to the hospital. Ramesh makes an appointment to see a GP and asks for an interpreter. When he gets to the clinic, he goes to the reception and gives them his name and he is asked to wait in the waiting area with all the other people. After waiting for a while, a GP calls his name and she takes Ramesh and the interpreter to her room. The GP asks Ramesh a lot of questions. She takes his temperature, she looks in his throat and checks his blood pressure. The GP asks Ramesh to do a blood test. The GP gives him a piece of paper and tells him where to go for his blood test. Ramesh, I would like you to make a longer appointment for next time. I want to check your full medical history and I need to give you the results of your blood test. You will need to book the interpreter again. Ramesh goes to a different clinic for the blood test. They will send the results of his blood test to his GP. Your GP and your interpreter cannot discuss your details with anyone unless you say they can. This is the law in Australia. Sometimes a GP will want to take a blood test. The blood that is taken out of you is only for the medical purposes. Sometimes a GP will ask you to go for an x-ray. If you are not comfortable seeing a male GP, ask to see a female GP when you make an appointment. If you change your GP, tell your GP where you are going. Ask them to transfer your file to your new GP. This will help your new doctor to understand your medical history. Always carry your GP's contact details with you. Ask for an interpreter if you need one. Healthy living. Healthy living starts at home by healthy eating. Eat fruit and vegetables and drink water every day. In Australia, it is safe to drink water from a tap. This kind of food has a lot of fat and sugar. If you eat too much of it, you will put on weight very quickly. This can lead to many health problems such as diabetes and high blood pressure. You and your children should not eat this sort of food every day. Your children need a healthy diet to have a healthy life. Do not put soft drinks and fruit juice in their baby bottles. It will hurt their teeth and they might put on too much weight. Breastfeeding is best for new babies. If you use formula milk, always use the recipe on the tin. It is very important to do physical exercise every day. You should also spend some time outside each day. 
The sun gives you vitamin D to help your bones to stay strong. Encourage your children to do physical activity and to play sports, which are very popular in Australia. Give your school child a piece of fruit and a sandwich with a healthy filling in it for lunch. Also, encourage them to drink water. Do not share your personal items like toothbrushes and towels. Always remember to wash and dry your hands before preparing and eating food and after using the toilet. Encourage your children to do this too. Always cover your mouth when you sneeze or cough. And don't spit in public. Spitting is not culturally accepted in Australia. It is important to have a regular health checkup. If you are a woman and sexually active, you need to have a pap smear test every two years. If you are a female over 40 years old, you should go for breast screening every two years. If you are a male over 40 years old, you should have your prostate checked by your GP every two years. If you are sexually active and have more than one partner, you must use condoms. You can buy these from the chemist or any supermarket. Talk with your GP or community health nurse if you have any concerns about sexually transmitted diseases. Always talk together to solve problems. If you and your partner or other family members are arguing a lot, you can go to a community health centre or Relationships Australia for help with your problems. A healthy family is a happy family. Immunisation Rita is very happy. She just had a healthy baby girl at the hospital. When she leaves the hospital, the nurse speaks to her about immunisation for the baby and gives her a blue book. Rita must keep this book. After four days at home with her new baby, a maternal and child health nurse visits Rita. She checks Rita and the baby are well and asks to see the blue book. All children in Australia have a series of injections. These are called immunisations. Children have these from when they are born until they are four years old. This is so they won't get serious diseases like measles and polio. I understand. The nurse says that her baby must have all the injections. Rita must take her blue book with her every time she takes her baby for an injection. Each injection is recorded in the blue book. When Rita's baby is two weeks old, she takes her to the maternal and child health nurse for a regular checkup. The nurse weighs and measures the baby. She asks Rita questions about how the baby is doing and how she is coping. The nurse explains to Rita about the immunisation. She tells Rita that she can choose whether she wants her baby to be immunised or not. The nurse gives Rita a piece of paper with her details of the places near her home where she can get her baby immunised. And don't forget to take the blue book with you. Do you have any children who were not born in Australia? Yes. It is important that you take them to be immunised too. Take them to your local GP 
or the community health centre or a local council session. And you and your husband should also be checked. Rita takes her older children to the community health centre and asks for them to have immunisations. She and her husband get immunised as well. Even if you have been immunised in your country of origin, you still need to be checked and immunised if necessary. Make sure to take the blue book when you take your baby for immunisation. It is important to keep all your immunisation records in a safe place. Sometimes your child may not feel well after immunisation. This should not last long. If you are worried, ask for advice from your local maternal and child health nurse or your local pharmacist. If you are born outside Australia, speak to your local doctor about being immunised. If you are going overseas, you should talk with your doctor about travel immunisation for your whole family. Ask for an interpreter if you need one. Mental health. Mador came to Australia as a refugee three years ago. He was offered many services on his arrival. Mador was a teacher in his native country and he wanted to be a teacher in Australia too. But he is still learning English. It is hard for him to get a job as a teacher. So he is feeling more and more unhappy. His life seems to get harder every day. One day, Hassan comes to visit. He is Mador's best friend. Mador, if you are not happy, you should go to see a doctor or a counsellor. No, I feel ashamed. I don't want to talk about this. I think I am weak. Mador, my friend, you are not weak. You are sad. In Australia, about one in four people feel the same way as you do at some time. Don't worry. You can go and talk to a counsellor at the health centre. They will help you get better. Mador phones the local community health centre. He asks to speak to the counselling intake service. Then he makes an appointment with the counsellor, Tom. Mador talks to Tom about his problems. He gives Tom permission to talk to his doctor so that they can work together to help Mador. Mador sees Tom every few weeks for counselling and also takes antidepressant medicine prescribed by his doctor. Now, Mador is feeling much better. He is enjoying his life again. Don't ignore your mental health. Mental health issues are serious issues. Always talk to your GP, counsellor or community health nurse if you are unhappy most of the time or if you are finding life hard. There are services and hospitals you can go to for help and many of these services are free. If you are worried about someone's mental health and you think they need help straight away, call your local hospital, talk to the psychiatric triage or the CAT team. Ask for an interpreter if you need one.